All right, in this lesson, we're going to be taking a look at something called infinite limits. And what this means is that we're going to be looking at functions and specific x values as we are approaching from the left and the right hand side of those x values. We're going to be seeing examples where the, the value of f of x is either approaching positive infinity or negative infinity or sometimes actually both, you know, one side different from the other. So um, we're going to evaluate these in two ways. We'll look at the, the graphs of these functions, and then we'll also take a look at them algebraically and see how we can answer it that way. So let's take a look at our first example. All right, so we are looking at f of x equaling 1 over x minus 1 being squared. And we're just wondering what's happening. <clears throat> we're going to look specifically at x equals 1 here. Hopefully we can tell something you know, is, is going to be happening when x is a positive 1. Um, but we'll get better, better than that as we as we move on here in the chapter. Well, let's first of all let's take a look at the graph. Okay, so if we look at the graph, and you can go ahead and, and do a rough sketch of this. Um, yeah, we can clearly see that at x equals one, we, what we have is an asymptote here. And then it's very simple to look at the graph and just tell. All right, well, from the left hand side we are approaching positive infinity, and from the right hand side we're also approaching positive infinity. So, so based on the graph, what we can just say is that the limit as x is approaching 1, that's going to equal infinity, meaning positive infinity. Okay, so pretty simple to look at. Uh, but what if we didn't have the graph to look at or graph and calculator and we had to figure this out algebraically? What could we do then? All right, well, now let's take a look um, at the value of this function as x is approaching 1 from both the left and the right hand side. So. Let's go from the uh, right-hand side first. We can say as x is approaching 1 from the right. Okay. Well, what we can do here is this. We can plug in a number that's very close to 1, but just slightly above it. So let's plug in. We'll put in 1.0001. Okay. And then we'll subtract 1 and then square. Okay. So that's going to be, uh, as we're getting close to 1, just a little bit above it, and we can see here, if we were to do this out, or if we do this number minus 1, we're going to get a really small number. Uh, then we're going to square that really small number, which makes, makes it even smaller. Uh, but most importantly is if we have a number like 1 divided by a really, really, really small number, um, that value is going to shoot up and be, become you know, essentially close to infinity. Okay? Now, in terms of the direction, we can tell we have a positive over a positive number. So if that's the case, that's going to be positive infinity. Okay. Now, if we look at it from the left-hand side, so that's as X is approaching one from the left. Now what we want to do is plug in a number that is a little less than one. So we're going to plug in like 0.999. We'll subtract one and then square. So again, um, what we see here is we're going to end up with a really small number, but now this is going to be negative, right? This was a little bit below one. So when I subtract one from it, I get a negative number, really small negative number. But if I square it, it's going to be a really, really small positive number. So now again, I have a positive divided by a positive. That will give me also positive infinity. Okay, so that is a way we can check out algebraically. And now why, if we look back to the graph, yeah, it makes sense that they're both going up to positive infinity from the left and the right hand side. Okay, let's take a look at another example. And this time, example two, we're going to say uh, this function is going to be equal to negative one over x minus one. And again, we'll look at the graph. See what the graph tells us. And then we'll look at it algebraically as well. So in this case, all right, well, now uh, when we look at our function here, this is g of x, <clears throat> uh, at x equals 1, there's an asymptote again. But this time, as we're approaching from the left-hand side, we are approaching positive infinity. But from the right-hand side, we see, okay, as we're getting closer and closer and closer, we're looking down, it's moving down towards negative infinity, okay? So this is when we're going to have to bring in these uh, one-sided limits again and kind of answer the question, uh, in two parts, okay? So let's actually do that. So again, we can tell from the left-hand side, we're going up to positive infinity. Right-hand side, we're at negative infinity. 
So let's put that into notation. So we'll say that the limit uh, as x is approaching, well, we'll start off from, uh, from the left-hand side. Um, we did notice that it was approaching positive infinity. Okay, so we'll just say that is positive infinity. But uh, on the other side of that, though, as the limit was approaching, uh, as x was approaching 1 from the positive side or from the right-hand side of it, then we saw it going way down to negative infinity. So we can put that in. All right, so this one we would break up into two limits uh, on the, the one side limits because they are different. Okay, so from the graph, we can see that. How would we be able to tell that, though, algebraically? Okay, so let's take a look. Um, and we'll start off this time uh, from the left-hand side. So let's just say we're looking at algebraically now from the left-hand side. Um, so we have one from the left. So let's just plug in again. We got negative one over. Now let's pick a number that's a little bit less than one. So we're going to say 0. 0.999. And then we will subtract one. Okay, and this time we're not squaring it. We're just plugging it in like that. Well, let's think about what happens if I have a number that is a little less than one. This is really, uh, you know, it's barely going to be anything less than one. But if I subtract one, I do get a negative number. So I'm going to have a negative number down here. Uh, I'm dividing a negative by another negative, which makes it positive. And because this number is so small, if I take the one and divide it by a really, really small number, I get infinity. So because it's a negative divided by a negative, it's going to be uh, positive infinity, which is what we saw up here from the graph. Okay. And we can see it visually as well like that. All right. From the right-hand side now, we'll say the limit as X is approaching one from the, from the right side. Let's take a look. We're going to put negative one. And this time, uh, a number that's a little bit above one. So we're going to go 1.0001 minus one. And let's evaluate this. So, all right, again, we're going to have a really small number, 0 0.0001, but it is positive now. So a negative divided by a positive, that's going to be negative. And because we have a, a 1 divided by a really, really, really small number, that's going to be negative infinity, which is what our graph showed. And you can see that visually here. Okay. So that allows us to algebraically tell what's going to be happening at these x values. All right, let's, um, let's try a couple now on your own. And let's just read the directions, and then I'd like you to pause the video and then give these a try. Um, we're going to look at these algebraically, okay? So we're going to find the x value for each one of these functions that is not in the domain. So pretty much what's, what's causing an issue or an asymptote. Uh, and then we are going to find the limit algebraically as x approaches that value from the left and the right. So again, we want to do this algebraically. If you want to verify your result with your graph and calculator, you can. But let's try this algebraically. Okay, so uh, pause the video, try these four, and then when you unpause it, you'll see if you are right. All right, hopefully you had a few minutes to try those out. Let's see how you did. All right. Now, if you see that you've done everything correct, I would, you know, maybe pause it and just take a look at your answers. Uh, if you have everything set, then I think you're good to go. If not, you can just listen to an explanation or if you're a little uncertain, uh, we can see, um, you know, what, what's going on here. So let's, uh, let's zoom in a little bit to, uh, we'll go to A. So what we should have gotten was the limit from the right hand. So the first of all, the, the value the time that remains x equals 4, right? So we have 3 over uh, 0 if we plugged in a 4. So that's the problem. So we know we have an asymptote. So let's take a look then. As we're approaching 4 from the right-hand side, well, this would be a positive over a really small positive number, giving us a positive infinity. Okay. However, if we're approaching 4 from the left-hand side, so a number a little bit less than 4, uh, subtracting 4, we would end up with a negative number. So we'd have a positive over a negative, which gives us a negative. All right, and that's essentially going to be the way we handle the rest of these. All right, so in number um, in B, we have x equals 2 is not in the domain. So let's check it out from uh, the right and left-hand side of 2. So if we go from the right-hand side of 2, a little bit bigger than 2, if I do 2 minus a number slightly bigger than 2, I'm going to get a negative down here. 
So a positive over a negative, I should get negative infinity. And then on the other hand, if I'm going from the left-hand side of 2, now I have a number a little bit smaller than 2. So 2 minus a number a little bit smaller than 2 is positive. Positive over positive gives us positive. <clears throat> and we can check all of these on the graphing calculator to verify. Uh, for C and D, we have, well, and for C, we have it's going up towards infinity. Positive infinity on both. Yeah, we're going to have a positive, and then this is definitely going to be positive because we're, we're squaring it. So on both sides, left and right, we're going to be seeing it go up towards positive infinity. And then finally, for D, we have a negative number over something being squared. So this is definitely going to be positive in the denominator. So I have a negative over a positive on both the left and the right-hand side. That's going to give us a negative infinity. Okay, so uh, hopefully those went well. Uh, if you did have questions, you can ask me in class, and we'll get plenty of practice of this in class, um, and we'll see you then. All right, thanks.